What do you want to be remembered as most? Oh God, the great beauty. <laughs> uh, hi, this is Rufus Wainwright and you're watching Billboard News. Tetris with Billboard News. How you doing, Rufus? Thanks for hanging out with us. Thank you for having me. Oh, what a shame that your back is to bleed on St. Valentine's and you said They slither while they pass, they slip away across the universe. You got big things to celebrate. It's been 25 years since you released your self-titled debut, man. How does it yeah. feel 25 <laughs> years later? Feels awful. No, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm very proud and excited to be alive <laughs> and still making music and, <laughs> and happy. And that first record I made has proven to have lasted. And I worked very, very hard on it. It took me three years to make that first record. Wow. It cost a lot of money. It was with DreamWorks Records at the time who had a lot of money to pay for that kind of thing. It's built to last, perhaps. <laughs> and then you made changes to it, you're re-releasing it. So yeah, what's we, gonna be different about the re-release? We remastered it, and then we also released some bonus material, other songs that I did at the time. I think what's interesting about the record is that it was made in the mid to late 90s, and it really was part of the last breath of sort of the grand record company artist relationship where they would sort of just write all the checks and kind of let you do whatever you wanted to do. And mm. and it really didn't expect you to be popular until your third or fourth album. And yeah. I mean, that was such a different time also, yeah. you being an openly gay artist, yes. having this sort of cabaret vibe. Yeah. And you will believe in love and all that How was the reception then? Well, it was interesting because I am technically the first sort of openly gay artist to be signed to a major label who was openly gay at the time and flourished. There was no coming you know, out. There was, yeah, there was no coming out. I wasn't trying to be a trailblazer or anything. What it was is that, you know, AIDS was still very much, well, it's, it's still part of our world today, but at that time it was killing a lot of people, a lot of gay men. And I just didn't want to end up in a situation if I did get AIDS at that point that I would be be like dying and also have to like come out of the closet at the same, kind of right, do like a rock wild. cuts and things. So I just wanted to kind of avert that, you know, tragedy really, if that had happened. Um, thankfully it didn't. And do you feel like your music would be received any differently today if you had released that album in this current climate? I still think if, if the album was released today, it would be considered very unique and very unusual and very kind of romantic, especially because we live in such a kind of tough world. It could be interesting if it came out now because it's just, it's just all about beauty, you know? And very little is just about beauty these days. Well, let's talk about what is coming out right now. Folkocracy, you know, your new music is out. Tell me what yeah. went into the idea of creating this right. album. Right, it's funny because I was, I was watching the Grammys. My, my last album, Unfollow the Rules, was nominated for a Grammy. I don't often get nominated for Grammys. Hey, but that is <laughs> a big thing to happen. Yeah, yeah, it's happened a couple of times, but it happened for the last album, and I hadn't really, you know, investigated that whole world too much because I didn't feel necessarily that connected to it. But what I did see after watching the show was that there was a lot of folk and kind of roots and Americana categories. And I was like, you know, I can do that. <laughs> I, <laughs> I know can that. Do that. I'm Taylor from that. Swift can do yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can have a dog in that fight. As the days fly past, will we lose our grants? So I just had the idea of doing a folk record, and I, I told my, my people, and, and they thought it was a great idea, and suddenly it was happening, you know. With, amazing guests and stuff. And yeah, and I mean, I was looking at the track list and I'm like blown away by your yeah. song choices. I was like, Cotton Eye yeah, Joe, love that song. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. what made you choose different songs? How did you go through that process? Yeah, I think in the end, we wanted to just cover a wide amount of ground, but there's English folk music, there's some Hawaiian folk music, there's gospel type stuff. It's, it's not only Scottish songs or whatever, it's very, Diverse, I should say. And let's talk about diverse. The people you yes. worked with on this project. Yeah, oh my God, yeah. Shaka Khan, yeah. Brandy Carlisle, yeah, John yeah. Legend. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. how did you get these people yeah, together for this yeah. record? We live here in Los Angeles, and there are many problems with this town. But one of the perks is that that you can, you know, call up uh, someone like John Legend, and they can pop over to the studio. It's time I was heading for home. I Burgundy wine. 
it is a real community of musicians and and even be, beyond the kind of celebrity and the and, and the fame and all of that, it is still a great place to make music and work work in music. You have to tell me, like, did you go in the studio with Shaka Khan, like hearing her yeah, voice? Yeah, yeah, no, we were there. Yeah. So Shaka came in. She was very unpredictable. Uh, she was she didn't know the song at all. She might have known the song, but she didn't know the version that I was. There's many versions of this song. So it took a while for her to kind of settle in. And I was actually worried at one point that we weren't going to get it. But then all of a sudden, you know, all the cylinders started started firing heating off. up and, and firing off and she just did an incredible performance. So, I absolutely so, love yeah, that. Yeah. And when you think about your legacy in general, your music is described as pop, literature, opera. Yeah, you yeah. know, there's so many layers to you. Yeah. What do you want to be remembered as most? Oh God. The great beauty. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of a three-headed monster. I compose operas too and musicals and stuff. So that's sort of like my composer side. Then I have my singer side. And then I have the songwriter thing. I mean, a pop guy. But I have like three distinct personalities who um, once I'm in that mode, that's what I'm doing uh, to the utmost. So um, I think in the end, it, between great singer and great songwriter, I think would be probably like my two first choices if I could rule everything. God, <laughs> if I could Sorry, I've done a lot of interviews today. I, like, <laughs> no, you're crazy. amazing. And I'm so excited <laughs> for everything that you have going on. So thanks for coming with Thank us. Thank you. And also, I got to come check out this tour. Yeah, no, so it's a great tour. I'll see you out on yeah. the road. Thank you. Thank you.